Great, now that you have a basic understanding of pandas and you know how to use Jupyter Notebooks, we can go ahead and learn how to load various kinds of files in Python using pandas and Jupyter. So I've got uh, five files here. They contain exactly the same uh, dataset and this is a text version or let me open the Excel version that uh, will show a pretty overview of the data, as you can see. So we've got um, seven lines of code, including the header, and we have also seven columns. So it's just some basic data uh, of supermarkets, uh, so the address, city, state, country, and the name of the supermarket and number of employees. And similarly, we have exactly the same data, but in different formats. So we have CSV, and CSV means comma-separated values. So it's basically a text file where the values, the columns, are separated by commas, as you can see here. So every column is separated by a comma. But it has a CSV extension, and it can be opened with Excel. So if I open this now, you'll see the same data set that you saw in the XLS file. We also have the same data in uh, separated by semicolons, as you can see in here. And yeah, if you're working with data, uh, you're probably familiar with these kinds of files. So this is how to store data. You need to have some conventions. And using such convention, then you use other programs such as Python to load these data. So uh, when you load a CSV file, Python knows that the values will be separated by commas and it knows how to separate them. Uh, it knows how to extract values. So we'll open all these one by one. We also have a JSON file, which is yet another format to store data and looks like a Python dictionary actually. So we'll learn how to convert them to a pandas data frame as well. So all these will be converted to pandas, pandas data frames. And yeah, I'll go ahead and start Jupyter. Jupyter Notebook. Here are my files. I'll go ahead and create a new Jupyter Notebook for Python 3. Before I go ahead and load those files in Python, uh, there's a trick I do usually. I import OS and then OS.list there and alt enter execute that so you go to the next line and what you get is you get a list of files and folders as well of file names that you have in the current directory so now i don't have to switch to my folder to look at the names i have everything in here now i can go ahead and import pandas and let's start loading these files one by one uh, let's say df1 so data frame one and that would be equal to Pandas. Now treat CSV, and then you have to pass the name of the file that you want to open. Supermarkets.csv, and just enter. And maybe you want to print that out. So df there, and we got an error. Uh, let's see why. It says uh, su supermarkets does does not exist. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, an R here, just there, and this time it worked. So, uh, dd to delete that cell, and yeah, what we got here is so we loaded the data frame first and then we printed that out so that we got this uh, table, nice table in there. That's how easy it is to load data from CSV file. Uh, now, if you see this, uh, this is in bold, this first uh, row there. And that's a special row, so that's the header of your data frame. And Python Pandas was able to automatically recognize the header from your file. So this method, the CSV method, has a header parameter, and that is set to true by default. But if you want, you can set it to none. And that's how you tell Python that my data don't have a header. So what Python will do is it will treat your first your first row of your file as a simple row, so it will just dump it uh, amongst the, the other rows. And what it will do, it, it will create a default header for your data frame with numbers. So I'm going to remove this, 
I'll leave it as it was. Notice that we also have an ID column there, which if you want, you can use it as an index for your data. So if you want to use ID as an index instead of letting Python define your index, uh, what you would do is uh, you apply the set index method to your data frame and then you say ID there, execute, and what Python will do, it will it will search for the column with name ID and it will set it as an index. Uh, DF.1 shape, if you want to know the shape of your data frame, so you get 6, 7, meaning that you got 6 rows and 7 columns, including the ID column. And yeah, that's how you load CSV files. Now let's go ahead and load DF2 pandas. Uh, what's next? Well, next is JSON. So instead of doing read CSV, you want to do read JSON. And then you just pass the name of your JSON file, uh, including the extension, of course. I executed that, I forgot to print that out. Uh, so this is a JSON file. And similarly, if you want, you can set the index to ID and execute again. And ID is set as an index. Now you can also notice that the order of the columns is not the same as the previous uh, CSV file that we open, which is not a problem. Every column has its own name, its own identity, so having columns without an order is not a problem. And let's go ahead and load the XLS file. XLSX actually, and an Excel file. So pandas read Excel and you pass the name of the Excel file. And normally you should also pass another parameter here for Excel files, because you know, Excel files might have multiple sheets inside of them. So you want to specify the sheet name, uh, which starts from zero. So you need to pass the index actually. If you want the first sheet, uh, you want to pass zero. If you want a second sheet, you want to pass one and so on. So I'll pass zero there. I had only one sheet in the Excel file. DF3, execute. And yeah, uh, we were able to successfully read the Excel file as well. Uh, yeah, let's move on with the TXT file. So it's a supermarkets uh, separated by commas. So it's a data structure separated by commas. Mm, for that, so for txt file separated by commas, again you use read csv. Just like that, df4, and here is the data frame. So uh, this supermarkets.csv actually, some say it's a comma separated file, but, but to be more accurate you would say a character separated values, so c is for character. And yeah, there might be different characters there. In this case, when you have commas as separators, you don't have to pass any separator parameter here. But when you have other values as separators, you will have to pass that. And uh, that is the next scenario. So uh, df5 pandas.read csv. Uh, so we're talking about uh, supermarkets semicolons. Oh, super markets semi columns dot txt. And yeah, let me try this as it is now. So if I execute that, Python will not be able to recognize the semi colon there. The reason to that is because the separator parameter has a value of comma by default. So you want to change that to your separator, which is a semicolon in this case. Execute. We got an error there, unexpected keyword argument separator. So it seems like um, read underscore CSV doesn't have a separated separator parameter. In that case, you want to do to help ask for help. Uh, so and yeah, here is the parameters that you want to pass. So it's actually a sep, and you can see that the default value of sep is a comma. 
to uh, close that and go here, change that to sub, execute, and here is the data frame. Great, what's left to do? Uh, yeah, uh, we consumed everything. And that's about reading uh, local files. Now, pandas also allows you to read online files directly from the web. For instance, um, here we have uh, we have a CSV file in this website. So I browse to, to that and then it was downloaded. And if you want, you can go ahead and, and put that in your Jupyter folder and then open it as we did. Or you can grab this URL, go here, say df 6 read csv and then pass the URL just there. df6 to print that out and boom here is the file. So it's the same exactly the same csv file that we opened earlier up but we were able to get it from the web. And yeah similarly you can get other files as well json. You can pass it as URL there and print that out and here is a file so this can be very useful when you want to automate things uh, let's say you have some data from from a website from a data provider or maybe you have multiple files and you want to write a loop in Python that accesses these uh, URLs and then it, it gets the data and also you you then analyze the data and so on so yeah that's about loading data in Python via pandas and using Jupyter. So I believe you find this very easy. And yeah, we'll move on and do some data analysis in the next lectures. So I'll see you there.